Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about how a protein folds from the uh, sequence to 3D structures and how long it will take to go from the sequence to the structure that is called the protein folding rate. In the last class, we discussed about protein stability specifically on stability upon mutation right. What did we discuss in the last class? Right, we discussed about a uh, database which database deals with the thermodynamic stability. Protheum, right. So, using the Protheum database, right, we try to analyze the important factors which influence the stability of the mutants at different locations, right. We related the physical chemical properties on ex one side and the experimental stability, right, on the other side, and we try to relate using correlation coefficient. So, we identified that some properties, right, which are uh, important for stability, for example, in the buried mutation, which property is uh, highly correlating. Right, the hydrophobicity, right? Hydrophobicity has high positive correlation with stability. But if the mutation is at the surface, right, then what did we observe? Reverse, inverse, inverse relationship, right? That is called the inverse hydrophobic effect. That means the change in increase in hydrophobicity will decrease the stability. Then we try to predict the stability upon mutation, right? So we discussed about various methods. So the one is the average assignment method. Right? How the average assignment method works? Then we will get the values for all the mutants. How many combinations? How many mutations? 380 mutations. Right? Then for new mutation, you assign the value from the table. That is a kind of lookup tables. Right? Then we can evaluate the sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, right? And correlation, and so on. So then we discussed about the inclusion of the sequence information or the structure information. Right, with the different neighboring residues or the surrounding residues, right, and then we discussed about the potentials. There are two types of potentials, right? One is the distance potential and the torsion potentials, and we combine these two potentials to predict the stability change. These are from the structures. If you predict with the sequence, right, we, we derive several rules, right, from the known in, uh, information regarding the uh, mutant residue mutated residue right as well as the residues which are neighboring the sequence we derived set of rules then we use the rules for predicting the stability whether this is uh, stabilizing or is destabilizing so we discussed about the structure prediction right from the unfolded state to the folded uh, state right and then we uh, discussed about the stability today we'll uh, deal with the folding rate so what is the folding rate of your protein means right it is the measure of slow or fast folding of your protein from its unfolded state Right, the random coil conformation to its the native three dimensional structure. Right, how long a protein will take to fold into a native three D structure? Why it is important? Because this folding rate helps to understand the kinetics, which is related with several pathologies like the prion diseases, Alzheimer's disease, and so on. So it is very important to understand the folding rate of any particular mutants as well as for the mutants. Right, you can see for proteins as well as what will happen if you mutate. A specific residue. And the predicting the folding rate, right, is also a challenging task similar to protein folding problem. Right, what is protein folding problem? Final protein folding. Right, you can uh, disappear in the kinetic con conformation of protein from its sequence. Like uh, still, it is a challenging. So next, folding rate is also important to see how a protein can fold from the unfolded state to the folded state regarding the time. So here, show an example. Okay, here this is amino acid sequence. Right, it takes time to fold a specific 3D structures. So, these folding rate vary over 8 orders of magnitude, right? You can, it, you can see these folds from microseconds to an hour. So, you get two examples one is a streptococcal protein, here the rate is 2 into 10 power 5 per second, this is very fast folding. And if you see the tryptophan synthesis, right, it is very slow folding, it takes a 1, 1 into 10 power minus 3 per second. So, now the question is how fast your protein can fold. So, I will discuss with the three different types of examples. For example, if you take the biomolecular interactions, right, for two different proteins or the protein and DNA, so whatever, if they want to make a complex, you can see the upper limit that is determined by the rate 
at which the reactants what are the molecules which are involved in the involved in the reaction they come close together by diffusion. So, how much uh, the rate they take then if you talk about the folding here you can see the rate of folding is the rate when the polypropyl collapse right to form the structure. So, from this you can see if you take one example say, say cytochrome c right here it the minimum time for folding is about 1 microsecond this is comparable to the hairpin loop or the helix formation so it is about uh, 1 microsecond. In this case you can see the rate right uh, for the folding is about 1 per microsecond. Now, I show a few examples like arc pressure is 10 power 4 per second and lambda pressure it is 5 into 10 power 3 per second and so on. This is all for the proteins likewise you can also accelerate or decelerate the protein or increase or decrease the folding rate right by amino substitutions like what we discussed about the stability right by introducing a mutation we can enhance the stability of proteins right. So, we identify the, uh, the mutants which can enhance the stability and we can design proteins. Likewise in the folding rate we can identify some mutations which can accelerate the folding process in this case they will go to the proper folding because if it takes more time then this may end up with this misfolding right due to aggregation right and some other aspects. So, you can get some diseases right this is the reason why we need to see the particular protein which folds into a particular uh, time right, to uh, stable 3D structures. So, how to measure this folding rate? So, there are various measures to get this folding rate mainly the star flow CD and the fluorimetry. This will give you the rate right at different concentration for example, here the x axis we give a different concentration of the equivalent hydrogen chloride and the y axis we show the observed rate right. So, you can see the concentration 1 to the different concentrations up to 10 molar and if you see this is the folding region and here this is the unfolding region and extrapolate to 0 to get the folding rate or unfolding rate at 0 concentration right because to get the uniform uh, data for different proteins and mutants right. We extrapolate here in the folding region it goes to here. So, here now this is the folding rate in water likewise because here we extrapolate this one right likewise extrapolate the unfolding uh, region here. So, finally, you get here this is the uh, unfolding rate right in water, water environment right. This can be analyzed using this uh, Chevron plot right. Now, once we have the data right for doing the bioinformatics analysis right we require a sufficient number of data and reliable data right. So, it is very important to construct databases right on these aspects right first they started to develop few databases. So, one is called the protein folding database. So, another one is after few years started they developed kinetic db but unfortunately both the databases are not available at the moment. In the folding data folding database they try to establish using a collaboration among different uh, experiment list they assign the different proteins to a different exper experiment list to get the data at same concentrations right and then they compile all the data and then develop this database. Now, how can we get the data the various aspects to get the data either we can get from the literature or you can see other databases for example, in the folding race this will deal with the mutants to get the folding rate upon mutation. So, we can use this folding race right this is server come database right. So, that is available in our website right to get the uh, folding rate upon mutations right you can get or uh, download the data and you can use for the analysis. So, for the data for the proteins right I listed some of the papers which give the data actual data we can uh, get from this literature. So, in 2005 right the Maxwell they formed a consortium and they try to see the folding rate at same concent uh, same concentrations right or same experimental conditions. Earlier days we get the data for the different uh, experimental conditions because different groups they use the proteins at different uh, conditions and they measure the folding rates and the published literature. So, the same groups they assigned this temperature pH and conditions they ask them to get the folding rate. In this case you get the data for different proteins at same concentration this is how they uh, published this paper in 2005 with the same experimental conditions. Then currently there are several other literatures and reviews right where they discussed about the uh, folding rates of proteins and currently we get more than 100 proteins we know the folding rates of the proteins. So, we have this data then we can analyze right what factors or what influence the proteins to fold fast 
or two, fo two folds low right. Earlier we discussed about the uh, different types of interactions also they are influenced with different structure classes. What are different structure classes we discussed earlier? All alpha proteins, all beta proteins, all plus beta proteins as well as alpha beta proteins right. So, what is the difference between all alpha and all beta? Predominantly alpha, predominantly beta. Which interactions are dominant in all alpha and all beta? Medium, medium, medium and short range interactions right they influence the all alpha proteins and the long range interactions are dominant in the all beta proteins. So, we look into this which type of proteins fold fast, which type of proteins takes time to fold? All alpha, all alpha proteins fold, fold fast. fast right because it is mainly medium range interactions, short range interactions they fold fast. Okay, now, I give you the one examples. So, these are the example for the all alpha proteins right you can see here and this for the all beta proteins. All these proteins are two shared proteins and small proteins. What is the meaning of two shared proteins? Right, we have two states one state the native structure and the unstate the unfolded state or a denatured states right. So, you can have the unfolded state to the folded state there is no intermediate. So, several proteins they fold perfect two states and also that small proteins we know the experimental data for the uh, folding rates. So, they can also have fast folders and slow folders even if all the proteins are two state proteins and these proteins are small about 100 residues. So, now I show the values for the all alpha proteins all beta proteins and we look into all alpha proteins this is the logarithmic of this folding rate L of L and K f right. So, this is very high. So, you can this the rate is 9.6 right per second with logarithmic of this. We take the all beta so we can the values 1 2 as well as the minus 1 right because that is uh, it takes time. So, if you look into these numbers generally you can see that all alpha proteins fold faster than all beta proteins, but that is not very strict because sometimes even all beta proteins can also fold fast because the one CSP the cold shock protein it, it works at 6.98 right similar to this one. But generally you can see that all alpha proteins fold faster than all beta proteins. So, we discussed earlier all alpha proteins are influenced with the short and medium range interactions right and the all beta proteins with the long range interactions. Which residues influence long range contacts and which residues uh, influence uh, medium range contacts right I will tell you. So, if you see the fast folding proteins one, one group and the slow folding groups another group and see the amino acid compositions or the preference or the contacting pattern then we could see some patterns for the slow and fast folding proteins. For example, if you see the polar residues so asparagine, glutamine, lysine, serine these residues right are uh, predominantly present in the fast folding proteins. If you see the difference between slow and fast fold right this is 5.2 and fast folding it is 9.5 right it is about 2 times. Likewise, these residues they are occurring highly in fast fold proteins right compared with the slow fold proteins. Then also if you see these medium range contacts that right, you can see the contact between the polar residues are dominant in the fast folding proteins right. This earlier we discussed about this uh, interactions contacts as well as the composition. So, that that agrees with the experimental data for the fast folding proteins. Likewise, if you see the slow folding proteins what do you expect which residues should be dominant? Thetophobic residues right then about the contacts long range contacts made by these residues like right? this is what we did right with the. So, higher occurrence of alanine, cysteine, glycine and leucine. So, these residues are predominantly occurring in the slow folding proteins than fast folding proteins. For example, cysteine there is 3 times right here also you can see the difference right in the case of slow folding proteins. Then the formation of this hydrophobic core involves long range interactions right this is how it slows down the folding process. Then we see the contacts in the slow folding proteins and fast folding proteins you can see the long range contacts and slow, slow folding proteins right they are mainly influenced with the hydrophobic pairs. See alanine alanine, tryptophan leucine, alanine glycine right cysteine tyrosine right you can see the contacts between the hydrophobic residues are more in the case of the slow folding proteins compared with fast folding proteins. So, we see the slow folding and fast folding proteins generally all alpha proteins right fold faster than all beta proteins and if you classify into two groups right which one is fast folding which one is slow folding right and see the preference of residues right the mainly the polar residues in the fast folding and the non polar residues 
in the slow folding proteins. Likewise, the interactions are the contacts, right? Mainly, the slow folding proteins are dominated with the long range contacts using this heterophobic residues. Okay, now the question is whether we are able to predict or relate this folding rates with any of the parameters, right? We discussed about various parameters obtained from sequence or structure. What are the various structure based parameters we discussed earlier? Structure based parameters, accessibility, accessibility contact, orders. contact order, long range order, heterophobicity, right? So, various parameters, right? So, also if you see the slow and fast folding proteins, the contacts are very important. So, we convert the contacts, right? The 3D structures we convert into contacts using in the form of contact maps, right? You can the contact maps, and from these contacts, you deduce various parameters like contact order, long range order and so on. So, now we will see how these contacts right, can be used for predicting or understanding protein folding rates, whether there is a uh, relationship between the contacts and the folding rates. Right. Basically, yes, right, because if you see the more number of long range contacts that will slow down the process. Right. Let us see. So, what is the contact order we discussed earlier? How to define the contact order? This given us delta sigma S i j by L and N. What is delta S i j? Sequence separation between the contacting residues. So, we construct a sphere of radius 6 angstrom and look at the contacts, right? Then the check, check the distance separation and that will give delta s. What is L? A total number of residues that is the length of this protein and N is total number of contacts, right? So, we do it for each residue to get the delta S i j, add up together and then normalize with the length and the number of contacts right so here i show the data for example if this is the sphere 1 and 7 delta s is 6 likewise for all the residues you compute right get for the t1 then you repeat it for all the residues in the protein right then we will get the value so then we relate that value with the folding rate if there are more long range interactions what will happen to the contact order so more long range interactions means what will happen in this equation this will be high, delta s will be high. If this is high, then what will happen in the contact order? That is high because they are proportional, right? So, in this case, you get the contact order is high. If the contact order is high, what do you expect the folding? Folding is slow because more number long range contact, then there is folding is slow. For actually, there are more short range interactions or more medium range interactions. Then compared with the long range contacts, so you can see contact order is less because delta s i j is less, right? In this case, case it can fold faster. Okay, now I show this figure. Okay, x axis is the contact order and y axis is the logarithm of the folding rate. You can see the inverse relationship between the contact order and the folding rate. So that means what we assumption, okay, what we made, that is correct. If you have more uh, contact order, right, that is less folding rate. If you less contact order, there is folding rate is high. It folds fast, right? Fine. So the correlation is about 0.7 to 0.8. That uh, can see inverse relationship between the contact order and the folding rate. Now, the second parameter, what is the next parameter we discussed? Long range, long range order, right. So, what how the long range order is derived? What is the concept used for, right? So, that means the contacts which are close in space, but they are far in the sequence, right. So, in this case, we see all the contacts which are uh, close in space, right, and far in sequence. Because in this case, Nij equal to 1 if the separation is. 12 residues. So, here you can see there are uh, how many adjustable parameters in long range order? Distance cut off. Right, one is a distance cut off, sequence, sequence this one and then this one. You can see distance is 8 angstrom and the sequence separation is right that is 12 residues. So, you have two adjustable parameters. We can adjust these parameters to get the long range order and how far this will relate the folding rates. This is how we get the number 12, right. Earlier we used number 12, right. Now, I will explain how we get this number 12. So, we take a set of proteins with the known folding rates, experimental folding rates, right. So, you can see the set of uh, uh, two set proteins with known folding rates. So, in this case now we can change the distance of separation. We can change from uh, 1 to 25 residues. So, how many residues which are within this limit? 1 residue or 2 residues, 3 residues and 4 residues so on. Then from that you can calculate the LRO. 
because n i j you can put i minus j that we change right 1 to 25 right for each case we will get the value. So, then we relate that L R O with the folding rate and we can calculate the correlation for each distance separation we calculate the L R O and we have to get this correlation that is L R O versus L n k f. For example, if it is 5 right, we get the correlation of minus 0 0.6 a 9 approximately then you go with the 10. So, you can see the correlation uh, is a negative correlation but it increases with respect to the distance separation up to here 12 or 13 almost the same after that if you increase more then again it is decreasing. So, finally, it go up to 25 then again it goes from the minus 0 0.58 this similar to what we get from the residues uh, separation of 2 or 3 residues that means there are some distance contacts which are influential for the folding rates right the contract order considers both short medium and long range contacts. But the case of long range contact long range order we consider only the long range contacts because that is the one which shows the highest performance if you add the long short range contact then the correlation is less that means there is something to do with only for the long range long range uh, contacts right. So, from here we, we get this value 12 this is how we get the 12 residue limit and with this 12 residue limit we can see the correlation of minus 0 0.78 with the experimental folding rate. How to calculate the uh, long range order? So, here we give the sphere of 8 angstrom look at the residues which are occurring within the limit and see the residues right which are having the distance of at least 12 residues. So, if you take the 3 and 152 I discussed last class right how many long range contact this can make right 1 2 3 right in this case 3 by 164 okay you can get the number right for this long range order right. So, for, so do it for all the residues and finally you divide with the n right this is the, this this is how you will get this well, first you do the summation of n i j for each of these residues sum up together and then we get this uh, value right to so, normalize with the n you will get the L R O. So, now we show the con long range contacts right at the different structure classes right as I discussed earlier four different structure classes all alpha all beta alpha plus beta and alpha beta. So, here in the case of the all alpha this is mainly here in the 4 to 10 range and the all beta. So, it is mainly in the 11 to 20 range and the alpha plus beta right you can see here right in this uh, between the all alpha and all, all beta and the alpha beta right this is the range. So, this can be reflected in the long range order because you can see the contacts are different in different structure classes. So, we classify the proteins at three groups all alpha all beta and mixer class and we derive the equations for these three classes and see whether there is an improvement in the correlation. If you do like this mainly long range order deals with which type of interactions long range interactions. So, in this case which type of which class of proteins perform better with long range uh, order all beta proteins right because influence with long range interactions. So, I show the data. So, here if you see all beta. So, you can see the correlation is very high 0 minus 0 0.92 compared to the all alpha and the mixture class proteins right this makes sense. So, if you see the long range order which involves mainly long range interactions right. So, you see all beta proteins right you can uh, get better correlation than the all alpha and the mixture class proteins. So, we derive the equation. So, this is the equation uh, for uh, getting the ln k f for all alpha proteins all beta proteins and the mixture class proteins here y is the ln k right and the x axis we can see the only the long range order. Now, we compare with the contact order and long range order right some classes you can get the comparable results some classes this long range order will perform better than contact order which class L R O performs better beta. all beta right. So, we see the same all beta as we see this very less it is because they include the short term medium range contacts that means short term medium range contacts include some noise in calculating the folding rate this is the reason why if including this medium range contacts the correlation is only 0 0.46, but if you exclude this we will get up to 0 0.92. So, in the case of mixture class proteins you can see similar lower 0 0.82 and 0 0.86 right the number is almost similar 
in both contact order as well as for the long range order. So, now we can predict the folding rate right how to predict the folding rate yeah, because we have the relationship between LRO and the LNKF. So, we have the equation y equal to mx plus c straight line equation. So, this equation is all alpha all beta and mixture class proteins. So, we can calculate for any all alpha proteins we calculate LRO and substitute the values in this equation right and this you can get the LNKF. So, we did this with the LRO right. So, you will get the uh, deviation of just 1.13 right per second. Then we classify the proteins in three different groups. We did four equations, one equation by considering all the proteins together right only one common equation for all the all the proteins. In this case the deviation is 1.13. Then what we did? So, we classified the proteins in three different groups right mainly all alpha, all beta and mixture class proteins and we derive the LRO from these equations and calculate the folding rates. If you do like this then you can see this is the correlation the correlation is uh, 0.92 with the different structure classes this is the deviation here I give the correlation right. So, if you do with the classification you can see the correlation of 0.92 for the different structure classes alpha and beta and beta class. So, here show this figure right show the comparison between experimental and the predicted LNKF. So, you can see there is a good uh, correlation between the experimental and the predicted uh, folding rates where most of them are very close to the straight line right this slope. So, we discussed about the contact order and the long range order contact order considers the uh, distance of 6 angstrom and take all the distances long range order we have one more uh, conditions based on the distance separation.